This morning we gather in the name of the risen Lord, the God who is calling out to us. And we respond in gratitude. We respond in generosity. We praise his name. We invite you to stand and join us in song. And this is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. And now your joy awaits my praise. And I give thanks. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. And when I was down, when I was down, you brought me out. You set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand. You are my God. Your faithfulness. My solid ride, yeah. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord. I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. We join in the choir of all creation who is singing praises to our God this morning. We lift our voices. And as we lift our voice, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our voice, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has Spoken over us, I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord. I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. We praise His name today, amen. Yeah. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. amen. Well, uh, the time might not be right just yet to greet each other with a, a holy kiss. But uh, maybe with a holy wave, make your neighbor feel welcome today. We praise the Lord this morning. We say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I raise you hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody. I raise you hallelujah Your spirit lives inside of me mm. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna 
gonna hear my praise break forth up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I raise you hallelujah with everything inside of me I raise you hallelujah darkness flee and I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah fear is lost it's hold on me yeah. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praise break forth up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive we praise the lord amen at the beginning of a new year, we praise the Lord, we say hallelujah. In the middle of a pandemic, we praise the Lord, we say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I raise you hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise you hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear has lost its hold on me. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I... 
blazing sun shall pierce the night and we will rise among the saints our gaze transfixed on jesus face Praise His name, oh praise the name of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God, oh praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For in this day we will see Your face. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. come to the time where we remember the sacrifice of Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he passed it to his disciples. This is my body, he said, broken for you. It's important for us to remember that. We are here because he allowed his body to be broken. It was a grateful heart grateful that sins have been forgiven. Go ahead and eat that. He then took the cup and passed it to his disciples saying, take and drink this. This is my blood spilled for the remission of your sins. With a grateful heart. Go ahead and drink. We are His. We have been bought with a profound price. One that we could neither afford nor ever earn. It's a gift for which we are eternally grateful. I wonder if you're able, if you would stand with me now, we're going to go to prayer. I want to invite those who would like to come forward to kneel and represent a need in your heart or somebody you love or... Maybe you just want to come and pray for us as a church or pray for us as a nation this very important week. As they're coming, I will say welcome to our friends at home. We're so glad you're watching. We're anxious for the day where we all gather again in one place. But we understand uh, many of you need to be safe. We get that. Father, you see who's kneeling here. You know the need. You know what's being wrestled with. We simply agree with what your Holy Spirit wants to do. Pray that you would answer in such a way that is unmistakably yours. We also pray that as they continue to wrestle, you would use this time of prayer and many times afterwards cause them to look more like you. Father, we have many needs in our congregation, as you know. We pray right now for Marcia Elliott, who is uh, in serious need of your touch as she battles COVID. And there are others. We pray your protection, your healing for them. We have people in our 
congregation right now who have recently lost a loved one and are in mourning. I pray they would find comfort and mercy from you. Some are concerned about finances or a job. Would they find in you the source of their provision? We lift up to you our nation as we go through unprecedented days. We pray your protection upon us in each of our state's capitals and in our capital, Washington, this week. We pray that there would be no senseless violence. Father, we want to hear your voice. We want to be your people. We pray that you would stretch us, that you would speak to us, and we would become more and more like you. I pray as we hear your word today that it would go deep into our hearts and we would purpose to be people that do as your word says do. I pray your blessing upon this congregation, upon those who are watching from home. Would you protect them and bless them? Not because we are worthy of it, but because you are so good. And we thank you for that. All these things, Father, we have asked in the name of our Savior and our friend. The mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing. Lima Community Church. My name is Erica Lowry, and I am the interim youth director for our teens, 6th through 12th grade. And I am so happy that you've chosen to worship with us today. Whether you are here in person or you're watching online, we are so thankful that you are with us. And before we continue into our service, I just have a few announcements to share with you. First, one of my favorite events of the year, we are having our week of prayer starting January 24th, and this will run to the next Sunday, the 31st. And our goal for this is just to gather as a body of believers and pray for our world, pray for our country as we're going through really difficult times right now, and also pray for each other and pray for our church and what God has in store for us. So we would love to have you join us as you exit the service, there are sign-up times out at the table, so feel free to pick a time that works for you and your family. Our next announcement, we have Alpha that starts this Wednesday, January 20th. This will be um, at 6.30 down in the children's elementary area. And this is a great class. If you are a new believer, if you're an older believer, if you have questions about the faith, if you have questions about God or the Bible, this is a great class to go to and connect with other people who are having those same questions. And there's also a meal that's served and it's a really great it's a really great night the last announcement I have, we have a Bible basics class, and this is a two-part class. They've already had the first part. Um, the second part is next Sunday, January 24th, and this is a class that if you have other questions about the Bible, you're not sure how to study scripture or how to interpret it, this is a really great class to go to where you'll receive encouragement and little tidbits of how to study scripture. So we hope you join us for that as well.
Now, as we transition into offering, you know that with the pandemic, we're not passing the plates like normal, but there are several other ways that you can give. You can give online at limacommunitychurch.com. You can also give with your phone, and I'm sorry I don't know the number, but it might be in your bulletin. And then also, as you leave the service today, there are also boxes at the back doors where you can drop your offering off as well. Once again, my name is Erica, and I am so glad that you are with us today. Now I'm going to pray for our offering and then we'll move forward in our service. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that we have to worship you, that we have to gather with other believers, that we have to rest in you. And Lord, I just pray a special blessing over this body of believers. God, I thank you for the gifts of offering that they are going to give today or throughout this week. Lord, thank you for moving in their hearts. Thank you for providing for us all financially. And God, I pray that you would just bless each and every one, because I know that sometimes it's hard to give. We think that money can go better elsewhere. But Lord, I thank you for um, everyone's sacrifice, their generosity to give. And Lord, I just continue to pray blessings on them. And Lord, take that offering and do with it whatever will glorify your name. Lord, we love you, we trust you, and we pray this all in your amazing name. Amen. Thank you. In ancient Israel, the people longed to hear God's voice. Although the people looked to their religious leaders for direction, corruption had caused a rift in the relationship with the Almighty. It was not a priest or a seasoned prophet who would hear the voice of the Lord. Rather, it was a boy named Samuel who would hear and receive God's voice. The child's prayer was simple. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Could it be that in our days, God still looks for those who would be attuned to his voice? What if God is still calling out, crying out to be heard above the noise of our lives? Do we have the ears to hear? Do we have the hearts to receive? Our bumper there attests that God still speaks, but let's ask the question, does he? Does God still speak today? Does he want to communicate to his world? Does he want to communicate to you? We have a wonderful story today. It's uh, taken from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. It's about the little boy named Samuel who was miraculously born to an elderly couple and uh, the wife, her name was Hannah, when she uh, became pregnant, she said, Lord, I will give this boy to you as soon as he's weaned. I'll, I'll give him to, uh, to the priest and he can raise him at the, at, the, at, the, at the temple. And so that was what was done. And we pick up the story in the third chapter. Let's go. The boy Samuel, and, and the boy there, uh, that, that, that Hebrew word can mean anywhere from an infant to a teenager. I, I'm just going to go with the idea, and, and several commentators have suggested 10 to 12 years of age at this point. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. The word of the Lord was rare. I think some would say that's the case today. But why was the word of the Lord rare? Was it because God was speaking but no one was listening? Maybe. Was it because God had spoken but the people who heard his word weren't doing what he suggested doing? Maybe. The word of the Lord was rare. One night, Eli whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see. Uh, he was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. 
And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Now this was uh, before a temple was built. And so they took the, uh, the old tabernacle that had traveled through the wilderness, was set up, torn down, set up, torn down. They took it and they set it up in a town called Shiloh. And it looks like, based on some other scriptures, that they built a structure over it. Uh, to protect it. Continuing. Then the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel Samuel answered, Here I am. (laughs) And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lay down. So he went back and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know, excuse me, did not know the the Lord. The, The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him, which is, uh, it it speaks of his youth. He, He didn't know the Lord's voice. A third time, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy, or in modern parlance, it was, Then Eli got a clue. (laughs) So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down. In his place. (sighs) Eli at this time was probably about 95 years of age. We know that from some other scriptures. We know it's significant that three times the Lord called out to Samuel. There's a significance in the pattern of three times. And we can credit Eli here for being very sensitive and discerning that it was the Lord speaking to him. The Lord came and stood there, calling uh, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And that's the lesson today. That's that's the scripture. Because now Samuel hears him. And the Lord gives Samuel uh, an idea of what he's about to do. And and Samuel the prophet is is birthed here. And he, he begins his... His work. It's significant when the Lord calls somebody by their name twice. It happens about eight times in Scripture. One of the times is Abraham, Abraham, when Abraham is about to bring a knife down uh, to, to, to slay Isaac. And, and uh, the Lord says, no, now I know that you love me more than anything else. It happens to Moses when uh, he's approaching a burning bush, and, and God says through the burning bush, Moses, Moses, go into the New Testament. You know the story of Mary and Martha, perhaps, in Luke, the 10th chapter. Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha's going all through the house, getting everything ready for a dinner party, and she says to the Lord, why don't you tell my sister to help me? She's just sitting there. <laughs> to which Jesus says, Martha, Martha. You are busy with many things, but Mary has chosen that which is important. Uh, I'll give you one more. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was a young Jewish leader who was uh, going from, from town to town, arresting Christians and putting them in prison and even having some of them killed. And God spoke to him, Saul, Saul. You know, when, when God speaks to somebody and, and puts their name out there twice. It's, it's, uh, it's tremendously significant. It says, what I'm about to share with you is life-changing. Um, this passage that we just read really begins with quite an ominous statement. The word of the Lord was rare. I think the same could be said of today. But it begs the question, is the Lord not speaking as much? 
or are people too busy to listen? I want you to know my bias, and it's that the Lord speaks. Jesus said as much. He said in John 8, 47, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. He, he, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. I believe he still speaks. After all, he's on record. He wants us to come to Jesus. He wants our sins to be forgiven. He wants to give us new life. He wants us to grow. He wants us to love one another. He wants us to stretch and become people that we could not otherwise become. He wants us to be more like Jesus. And since all of those things are, uh, are designed to stretch us, it would seem to me that he would speak to his people. I want to share with you a few ways. I think I've got nine here, but it's not an exhaustive list. A few ways in which God speaks today. Um, God speaks through the Bible. There are many times when I've been reading the Bible and it just seems all of a sudden the words I'm reading take on a very special importance. I remember once um, I was really seeking the Lord, and I went away for a day, and I just took my Bible, and I was reading in John's Gospel, and and uh, what I'm about to it, it, the, the verses that I'm about to share with you just kind of popped out at me. It was like bang, bang, bang. The Lord was trying to get my attention. I saw in John uh, thirteen thirty four a new commandment I give you: love one another. Skip a chapter in, in John 15, 12. Jesus says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Drop down five verses. My command is this, love each other. Anytime you have three things in scripture, very quickly, it's significant. And it changed my life. I realized that the most important thing we do Jesus only gave one new command, a new commandment. I give you love one another that we're to love one another. Sometimes um, I hear God in a sermon. Hopefully you do too. <laughs> I hope you do. Um, I, I remember listening to a sermon and I, I, I wish I could remember who the pastor was. It, it wasn't anybody here. I was, I was out of town. I was listening. I think it was one of our college presidents, but I can't remember. But he was preaching on Psalm 46, and it was a great message. And when he got to verse 7, he said, you know, it says here, the God of Jacob is with us. And he really accentuated with us. And then almost parenthetically, he said, you know, those might be two of the most important uh, verse, uh, words in Scripture. He's with us. He's not way out there. He's with us. Well, I'll tell you, I was going through uh, some deep, deep waters at that time. And, and it, it, it spoke to me so deeply. It reminded me that we, we don't serve a God who kind of wound up the universe and then took a walk while the universe runs itself and he's way out here. We serve a God who's with us. We don't have to raise a voice. We don't have to shout. We don't have to invite him to come. He's here. He is with us. Sometimes I hear him in a sermon. Sometimes I hear God through my good friends. It says in Acts, uh, uh, where they were writing a letter, and, and, and they said, it seemed good to us in the Holy Spirit. In other words, the, the community of believers really sensed this together. There have been times when friends have said, you know, I wonder if God isn't saying this. There have been times where I had several friends say, you know, I wonder, is God saying this to you? And, and I, I want you to know that when a friend says, I think maybe God might be saying, that's good, but use that as a, a confirmation of something he might speak to you. You, you can't just uh, act on what the Lord is saying through a friend. You need, to, you need to hear it as well. Sometimes God speaks through an audible voice. I've got to tell you, I've never, I've never heard a voice. I never have. But just this last week, I had dinner with a good friend, and he was sharing with me a story, and, he, and, and the Lord spoke to him, and I, I believe him. I, I really do, but it's very rare. 
If I were to ask here, there may be one person here, maybe not. Um, but it, 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 does, it does happen. Sometimes God speaks through dreams. This has only occurred to me once, and it was quite some time ago, 20-something years ago. But I, I know he speaks through dreams, you know. Sometimes uh, he speaks, and, and most of those are pretty rare. Now, now we're getting to some that are pretty common. He speaks through promptings. Promptings. It's like God just gives you a thought. She needs a phone call. You need to stop what you're doing and, and go spend some time with him. <laughs> you need to apologize for that comment. And one of the ways I know it's the Lord is it, it pops into my head unbidden. Um, you know, I see my friends down, down here in the front row from Laura's house. I'm so glad you are, right? And, and so I'm thinking of Laura's house, and now I'm thinking about gardens. And then I'm thinking, well, he's a good gardener. And then this thought is associated with this thought, which is associated with this thought, which is, that's how we think, Right? Laura's house, gardens, this guy's a gardener, this guy's a gardener, and he has this kind of car. I got that kind of car. And, and we think by association. But when the Lord prompts, sometimes he just, he, just, he just drops something in your head, and it's unassociated with anything else you're thinking. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, it came from the Lord. <laughs> and it's usually an instruction. Do this. It's a prompting. It's a wonderful thing. Sometimes um, there's just a sense that you need to be a certain way or, or stretch or become a certain way. You, you don't hear a voice. You, you really can't point to something. You just know that this is something you need to work on. It's, it's a sense of what the Lord is saying often confirmed by other people in the community. It, it, it's just a sense. Sometimes uh, God speaks in an inaudible voice. I, I got to tell you, I, I've, I, I've heard that voice maybe a, a half a dozen times in my life. Uh, one of the most notable times uh, was uh, I was in my 20s, about five years ago. And... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, I, you know, when I got out of college, uh, my goal was to be very wealthy. I wanted to be financially independent by the time I was 30 so that I could support other people in ministry and so that I could do things in ministry without having to ask people for money. It bugged me. Well, I, I was a director of market research for a steel firm, and I had a business on the side. And then I had a business partner do me dirty and, and, and just wasted the business. And then I got laid off from my job. And all that I was building was gone. And it was during that time that I had some friends and my pastor would say, Doug, I think, are you sure you're not supposed to be in the ministry? I, I don't know, Doug, are you sure? And it wasn't that I was fighting it. I wasn't. I, I wasn't fighting a call to preach. I, I just didn't think that I was good enough. I saw guys in the ministry being way up here, and I knew I was down here, right? Now I'm in the ministry. I know we're all down here. <laughs> we're all, all beggars trying to tell other beggars where to find some, some bread. Well, January 3rd, 1983, I called my pastor. I said, I, I want to go to seminary. And he canceled his morning. He said, I'll be there in 15 minutes. He, he canceled his morning. He came and picked me up, and we drove from Worcester, Ohio, where I lived, to Ashland, Ohio, where there was Ashland Theological Seminary, a great seminary. And, and I, I enrolled. In fact, they had a chapel that morning, and they asked for new students to stand up. He stood up, and he pulled me up. <laughs> he said, this is a new student. He was so excited. We were driving home, and it was raining and he was talking, and I really wasn't listening. I was just looking out, and it's January, and it's raining, and it's gray, and it's monochromatic, and, and I'm complaining. I said, Lord, this is not the plan. 
The plan is for me to be financially independent and then minister and then help other people in ministry. And the Lord spoke to me in absolute certainty. I, I can tell you exactly the words, even though I didn't hear them with my ears. He said to me, I don't need your millions. I have all the money I need. What I lack is faithful men. And if you will be faithful, I'll provide all the resources you need. Now that was uh, 38 years ago. And I'm here to tell you, it's true. Somehow, somehow, baby, we got two kids through college when we were making about that much, remember? <laughs> somehow, he met every one of our needs. It was 10 years ago when I finally realized God had made a covenant with us. And he is faithful. I remember a time when we were... Uh, going through some really difficult days. Uh, we were traveling as evangelists for 10 years, and we, we, we were on vacation, and we were on this boat in a lake called Lake Winnipesaukee in uh, New Hampshire. And the sun was setting. It was kind of a, a sightseeing boat. And we were kind of relaxed at the end of the day. And I, I watched the sunset, and I'm holding my best friend next to me. And the Lord whispered to me, and I didn't hear it here. I heard it here. And he simply said, it's going to be all right. And everything changed. Now, the situation didn't change, but I did. He spoke to me. He still speaks. He might not speak to you that way. He might speak to you another way, but I'm telling you, he speaks. I'll give you one more. He speaks in uh, the thin places of our lives. Thin places. By that I mean, you know that, that, that time, sometimes I call it la-la land time, where you're not yet fully asleep, but you're not yet fully awake, right? Maybe you've hit the snooze bar once, or, or maybe you're just starting to wake up, and you haven't quite woken up, but you're not quite asleep, right? And it's, it's, it's often in those quiet moments that, that God speaks to me. He gives me uh, just one word or a sentence, often a a scripture, and more than a few times, a scripture reference that I didn't know what it said. (laughs) And I go to scripture to find out what God's saying to me, and I go to the chapter and verse, and wow, it's, it's so relevant to where I'm living. Thin places. When we are not holding anything. We're not engaged in a conversation. We're not watching TV. We're not on the internet. We're not doing anything. We're just still. It's a thin place. And God speaks. Now, like I said, that's not an exhaustive list because we don't serve a God that is programmatical that one size fits all he made individuals and he speaks to us individually and he will speak to you in a unique way but here's the question I want to ask how do we position ourselves in order to hear God How do we get in a position that is conducive to hearing God? I I love uh, to take photographs of the night sky. And I love stargazing. But if I went outside today, if the sky was clear and looked up, I, I wouldn't see any stars, even though they're there. If I want to see the stars, I have to do it on their terms, not mine. I have to wait until it's dark, until it's clear. And there are things that we do to position ourselves that we can hear his voice. I think we hear from him when we're quiet, when we're still, 
when we don't have anything in our hands, when we're not running from here to there to there to here to there, but we are quiet and still and relaxed. It's a beautiful story in 1 Kings about the prophet Elijah. Elijah had just done this miraculous thing where he defeated the prophets of Baal and King Jezebel threatens his life and so he runs and he runs and God feeds him miraculous food and he runs for 40 days and he's hiding in a cave and then finally God's going to speak to him. We pick up the story there. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. But after the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, He pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? A whisper. I believe God still speaks. I believe he speaks quite a bit. And I believe it's We, who do not listen. I don't think he raises his voice. I don't think he shouts. I don't think he's going to be in competition with the things we hold in our hands. Or the crowd of people, or movie, or television. I don't think he's going to compete. I think he just whispers. And if we want to hear it, we need to be quiet and we need to be still with nothing in our hands, not engaged in a conversation, not trying to solve some problem, not watching some movie. Still, quiet. The problem is we, you and I, are children of our age. A lot changed in the year 2007. The iPhone was invented and several other technological things that we have embraced. And for all the good that's done, it has robbed us of quiet. And robbed us of stillness. How many times have you seen something like this? You see a family eating and everybody's doing this. How many times you walk down the street and there at the corner, everybody's checking on their, their Facebook or their, or their email. Or how about the 84% of Americans who go to bed with their cell phones and pick it up the first thing when they wake up to check the headlines? We can't hear God when we've got something in our hands. When we're reading, when we're surfing, when we're talking, when we're watching, we hear him when we're still and we're quiet. So if God still speaks. Do we want to listen? Do we want to hear what he has to say to us? I I love Psalms 130. The psalmist says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than Then watchmen wait for the morning. I can see that watchman. I can see him on the wall. 
He's looking out in the, in the, in the pasture land beyond the walls of the city. And he's straining his eye to the horizon to, to make sure there's no enemy coming, no marauders, no bandits. And then every once in a while, he looks back into the city to see if there's any flames that have to be put out because cities could burn down suddenly. And I can see the watchman in a half an hour before the sun rises. Because when the sun rises, somebody else comes and takes his position. I can see him tired. I can see him hungry. I can see him wanting to lie down. And he's watching. He's watching. And the psalmist says, more than that, I want to hear your voice. I want to know what you're saying to me. C.S. Lewis says, it's not that our desires for the Lord are too strong. He said they're too weak. He said we're half-hearted creatures falling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at sea. We are far too easily pleased. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman waits for the morning. More than the watchman waits for the morning. I believe he speaks. And I believe it is incumbent upon us to build into our lives. Whether it's putting our cell phone chargers on one floor while we sleep on another or something. But we can't go through our lives with no quiet with no margin if he is speaking to you do you want to hear him yes let me ask you to bow your heads let me ask you now to do a little work and answer this question where is that time for you how do you create that quiet, still time in your life? Father, we know that you will speak when you want to speak. That you're not beholden to us to speak the moment we become quiet. But I do pray that as many in this room refigure their lives and reconstruct their times, to build in quiet. I pray that in your time and in your way, they would indeed hear your voice and know your will. And may the word of the Lord not be rare in our day. I pray in the name of Jesus. I love you, but more importantly, our Father loves you. God bless you, friends. All right, as we get ready to...